So this is the little 107 and we've had a little bit of bother with it. So let's show you what's happened. Unfortunately, somebody's ran into the back of it. Now it's not caused a huge amount of damage to it, but is it enough to write it off? Is it a bad thing, the car being written off? Let's have a chat about it. Right, come and have a look at this. So at a glance, it doesn't look like a great deal has happened to it. To be fair, a great deal hasn't happened to it. But the car came in, duffed it in the back, and from the outset, all you can see is a little scrape there. It's cracked the paint around the button there on the bumper. It's got a scuff on here, a little scuff here. But the car came in. The 107 has stopped in the standing traffic and the car came in from behind and just shunted it. It was enough to move the car forward a bit. So, if you didn't know what you were looking for, you'd have looked at this and, and thought, ah, it's got a couple of marks on it. Car's a bit old, you know, shall I bother with the insurance, shall I not? You'd probably go, ah, just forget it, you're okay, off you crack. First thing you've always got to check is, does the boot open properly? Because although this outer skin looks all right, there's the back panel behind it, if that gets dented, it could knock the boot latch out of position and completely, yeah, you can't get the boot open or anything. Luckily, this one's not like that. The boot does open and the back panel itself is pretty straight. But there is damage behind that you can't see. So let's just go into it a bit further. We'll get that out of the way. We'll drop these seats down. Okay, let's show you in the boot. So as we come in here and we, we have a little look down. Now we've got the sub box in the boot, which you've got another video on if you wanna have a look at that being made and whatever. But then you look at the back panel here and this shape should be smooth and this here, you can see the crease there. And that's where the car's come in and it's actually gone through the back and bashed into this panel here. And this piece of wood that I just put in to stop this sub box sliding around has actually took a bit of the impact um, onto the back of the seat, which has stopped this caving in, stopped this caving in here even more. But like I say, it has just creased that, it's creased that back panel there. Further down, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing else below that. This is the only visible part of damage that we've got here. That's the close-up of the, the little crack in the, in the paintwork there. Like again, it's, it's not massive. Little scuff, a uh, little scuff on there, and a little scuff on there. Now underneath, the car you can look up the bottom there you can actually see quite well up behind the panel and see how much damage there is which there's not a lot there's not a lot there so this is where the fun starts with the insurance companies the car that crashed into the back the lady she assumed full responsibility straight away she said it was her fault so here we go, this is what happened. We've got this little Fiesta here. This one has run into the back of the 107, following being shunted in the back by the lady driver in the Qashqai. She's really thumped into the back of this Fiesta well look, give it a right good dink, which has then shoved it forward into the 107. So the Fiesta's took most of the impact, but the lady, she was uh, very apologetic and yeah, put her hands up to uh, causing the accident. If you do have a bump, if you just had one, get your camera out, record the scene. And if you can just get the person saying, if they're saying it's their fault, just record them saying it. So you've got it all on your camera. That's, that's quite an important one. In this case, the lady, she said that she was at fault. So no problem at all. Came and brought the car back home to me. I had a look at it. 
straight away saw the damage because he thought there was nothing wrong and he wasn't he says i don't think there's anything wrong with it you know it's all fine but after having a look and i saw the bits of damage you think well we ought to put a claim in um you know why should we have the damage it wasn't our fault it'd be nice to get it sorted out when i saw the back panel damaged i thought now this isn't going to be straightforward because if you take that to a body shop they're going to have to take the bumper off these little marks they'll want to replace the bumper they won't do a repair on it um, the back panel itself to repair a back panel it's not a massive job but in a body shop to do it they always charge an absolute fortune generally if they've got an older car and they see a back panel damage they'll want to write it off so that's the process we had to go to we went to the insurance company from the insurance company they told us which body shop to go to we went to the body shop they assessed it and lo and behold they wanted to write the car off now the car is perfectly fine to drive it's only a small light damage to the vehicle so you think well i don't want it writing off because you know i like the car uh, i don't want to look for another one i don't want to have to buy another one is there anything else we can do the answer to that is, is yes because you can have your car written off and you can buy it back for a, a minimal fee so what we've done the insurance company offered us £1,800 as a write-off for the car, which is more than what we paid for it. So it was a no-brainer. We're going to take that. The reason they do that is because if you persist and you really want to get it fixed and you want to get it repaired, it's going to cost them a lot more. The body shop's going to charge them a lot of money. They're going to have to put you in a high car at probably £100 a day. So it soon racks up the builders and it's cheaper for them to, to pay out the £1,800 to, to get it out there here and get the claim sorted and done. So the £1,800 was a good price, good price for the car, but we want to keep it. They wanted to take the car away and scrap it, but you can ask to buy it back. When we actually put the request in and they came back with the price, I was expecting them to be asking sort of four, £500 for the car. They actually only wanted £78. <laughs> <laughs> so we bought the car back for 78 quid from the insurance company and that's it you can repair it yourself in this case doesn't need a great deal doing to it i'm not going to straighten the back panel out it's not causing us any problem we will do some repairs on the bumper just to tidy up the paintwork but other than that it's um, it's money in the bank it's great the only thing is you're going to have a a scar on your on your logbook so what that means is you're going to get um the car will be written off it'll be a cat s a cat c um which isn't a bad thing you come to sell it you have to ex you have to declare that it's been written off but like you can see we've got the photos and the footage of the damage and anybody that wanted to have a look at that we could show them that the damage that was uh, caused that caused it to be written off and they're not going to be bothered by that it would put some people off but we've got far more money back to the insurance company if we only ever got 500 quid for the car when we sell it on. It would still be worthwhile as claiming that £1,800. Right, so let's just go a bit deeper into the categories, the, the write-off categories from the insurance. I've got a list here. I'll just run through them with you and we can just chat about them. So it's quite important because there are some differences in what you have to do depending on what category the write-off is. So the first one is Cat A. Um, the entire vehicle has to be crushed. That's a bad one. That's usually if somebody's died in it, um, if it's been contaminated or something quite serious, that one, the car's got to be crushed. Cat B, um, the vehicle cannot be repaired. Again, it's going to be something pretty drastic, something pretty nasty has happened to that car. Um, body shell has to be crushed, but you can salvage other parts from it. So the actual... Again, it's usually if there's been a fatality, um, but you can salvage some of the parts off the car that have not got contamination. Cat C. Vehicle can be repaired, but it would cost more than the vehicle's worth. That's quite a common one. You can use the vehicle again if it's repaired to a roadworthy condition. So, quite straightforward. But with the Cat C, you have to send off your logbook to the insurance company and then you have to apply to the DVLA for a new one telling them that the vehicle's been written off. 
So that's that's quite important. Cap D, vehicle can be repaired, but would cost less than the vehicle's worth, but other costs such as transporting the vehicle take it over the over the current value. So you can use the vehicle again if it's repaired to a roadworthy condition. That one is a, that's a good one. That's what we've got with the with the 107. It's damaged, but it's we can make it roadworthy again. The reason it's going to cost more to fix it than what the value of the car is is because, like I said about the high car and other issues. So the actual repair itself would be less than 1800 quid. But by the time you've built in the costs of giving a hire car for £100 a day, probably for a, you know, a seven or eight day period, it just ramps it up too much and writes the car off. So the, the claim would be more. So with the Cap D, you don't need to send off the logbook to the DVLA and you don't have to notify them. So you just carry on as normal. Which is which is good. That's a good one. So then you've got Cat N, which is can be repaired following a non-structural damage. You can use the vehicle again if it's repaired to a roadworthy condition. Again, you don't have to send anything off. You don't have to notify any, anybody. You just you just crack on. Um, that can be down to things like if all your windows have been smashed um, and if an airbag's gone off or something like that. You know where the costs um, uh, there's, there's no structural damage to it and it's more light stuff trivial stuff that's been broken cat s uh, vehicle can be repaired following structural damage um, you can use the vehicle again if it's been repaired to roadworthy condition so um, with with the cat s um, structural damage you do have to notify the dvla you have to tell them that it's been written off um, and yet again, you have to send the logbook off to the insurance company and you have to apply with the V62 back to the DVLA for a new new logbook, which will then come back with the, like I say, with a scar on it with an insurance cat on it. So just going over something else. Uh, a, a few years ago, which we're talking back in 2017, uh, if you bought a car or if you had a car that had been written off and you repaired it, you used to have to apply for a VIC, a VIC check which was vehicle identification check. So you'd do that and the DVLA would either come out to you or you'd have to take the car into a station. They would check the VIN number, chassis plate, engine number and all that and make sure everything tallied up. It's almost to stop ringing, to stop people putting different engines in different chassis and bodies and things. Um, that is finished. That scheme is finished. You don't have to do a VIC check anymore for written off cars, which makes life a lot easier. You know, it's easier for people who want to keep cars and who want to repair cars. Um, but it's an important one because it was it was there, but it's been finished. As of 2017, they've done away with the scheme. So just to clarify on the process, if you're thinking of keeping a vehicle after it's been written off, and the vehicle category is a C, D, N or S, the insurance company will give you a payout and will sell the vehicle back to you to keep the category C or S, you also need to send the complete logbook to the insurance company, apply for a free duplicate logbook using the V62. The DVLA would record the vehicle's category in the logbook. You can keep the logbook if you want to keep a vehicle in a category D or N, which is, which is great. So if you follow the channel, you know how much I rate these little cars. And this particular one, this little 107, has been an absolute blinder. It's brilliant. It's a really good car. So a bit of damage in the back, it's not the end of the world. Because the back panel has been slightly kinked, that's going to write the car off. You know, it, that, that's all it takes is some, they call it structural, but it's, I mean, it's not really, um, it depends on how bad the damage is. Had it have been caved right in, then it would have been a different story. But you can get your car written off or you can get a car written off for really, really trivial things. A really minor, minor damage like that and it's enough to, to write the car off. For us though, it's a win-win because the claim's gone through, the car's been written off, we've been paid out and, and we've bought the car back for, for £77. You know, it's ridiculous really. Uh, scrap value. Because this was being paid out by the third party insurance, 
you have to make your insurance company aware that you're going to continue the policy and that you, you want to keep your car and you get, you want the insurance to, to continue. So we had to ring our insurance company up and say to them, you know, we are continuing, we're keeping the car, we're continuing to drive it, so don't cancel the policy. And, and that's fine because the claim hasn't gone through on our insurance, it's gone through on the third party insurance, it's not a problem at all. We can continue to keep the policy going. If it was your fault, if it was uh, if it was your your claiming on your own insurance policy for the damage, if you'd reversed into something and the car has been written off, you can do exactly the same process. But if they pay you out, you then have to take out a new policy. You'd have to have a complete new policy because that policy policy has been used and the car's been written off. You would have to take out another policy to to continue to to drive the vehicle. It's not the end of the world, though. Now we're doing a video on the bumper repair. We'll get that sorted out so you can see we'll sort out the scratches and the dent. That'll be coming shortly. So I suppose the question was, is it a bad thing having your car written off? The answer to that depends on the damage. It really does depend on the damage. If yours is, um, if your back panel's all stuffed in and it's really badly damaged and it's, it is going to cost a great deal to repair it, then it's probably not worth it. It's, it. You just want to get it written off, take your money, and that's that. But like this one, the damage was so so light behind the scrapes and the scratches, it's worth keeping the car. So write the car off, keep the money, keep the car, everyone's a winner. If that's been a use to you, drop me a little thumbs up, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.